Okay. I'm Lee Ronell, and this is So You Want to Be a Mentor. Uh, this is about becoming a mentor for Best Robotics at Northwest Shoals Community College. Let me get the PowerPoint up and running here. Um, so being a mentor is a really cool thing to do. Um, as it says here, joy and fulfillment of being a team mentor. We're going to learn a lot of good things about children in school, robotics, etc. So, who am I? I'm Lee Brownell. I currently work with the University of North Alabama with the Amstop program. Uh, I'm the 6 8 science specialist, and what that means is I go around to area middle schools and I help teachers with science. Um, I'm also a member of the Best Robotics Board of Directors. Um, I'm District 3 representative, which means I, I represent all of, or a good chunk of, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee uh, at the Best Robotics Board of um, Meetings. So that just really means um, not that big a deal. Okay, so what's a mentor? Well, Somebody asked you, or perhaps you were a parent of a student who's on a team, or in some way you got um, told that you probably need to be a mentor for a team. What that really means is that you're somebody who's going to work alongside of the sponsor, and you're going to lend some expertise and or support to the sponsor and the students says it or, but it's mostly the students that you'll be helping and not really doing anything much for the sponsor themselves. Um, you have some knowledge or some experiences that are going to make you a very important part of this program. Here's what we're not asking you to do. We're not asking you to build a robot for them or to make a trade show booth for the students or to make a presentation or a website or a computer game or a computer program. Your job is not to do the tasks for the students. Your job is not to take anything over. You're there as a guide. You're there to give the students some experiences or some experience that you have they don't have they've not been out in the world they don't know um, some of the things that you probably do know so you don't also you also don't give them just a way to do something maybe you can think of three or four different paths that they could take to get the task done and your job is to help them uh, select a path not tell them which path, but to help them select the, uh -huh. the path that best fits what they want to do. Number one rule for all adults, not just you, but the sponsor and any other mentors that happen to be around, don't do the work. That's not what you're there for. We don't want you to tell them what to make. We don't want to tell them how to build it. What we might want you to do is to be there for guidance. Okay. So there's a fine line between um, telling them too much and not telling them enough. Now, err on the side of not telling them enough. Um, for example, I give you this about their wheel falling off. We had that experience before. Um, I was the sponsor of the, the Russellville robotics team, RCS Engineering, and our very first time out, the wheel fell off the robot. They were driving it around at all day. Wheel falls off, and they pick it up, and they bring it back to me, and they say, what do we do, Mr. Brownell? And I said, I don't know what you're going to do. And I said, basically, I said, look at it and see if there's a way to fix what went wrong. Do you, can you tell what happened? And what really happened was the motor mount gave way. They had using, used a piece of um, pipe strap to hold the motor down. Well, the motor just turned inside of that. And so their fix 
was to take a piece of wood and wedge in there to make it sit straight for the little bit that they were going to be able to drive it. So helping them see their mistakes or maybe not help them see them but point them in the right direction of have you thought about this that's what you do. Okay. Um, as far as tools go you should be there to help them use the tools. Um, one of my fast, hard and fast rules at Russell was that the students, uh, unless they were a high school student, they were not allowed to use the. Um, oops, hold on a second. All right, sorry, sorry for the interruption. Um, so with tools, the number one thing was don't let uh, elementary or middle school kids, or I didn't, let them use cutting things. Um, I let high school kids, but if you need to um, cut something for a middle school kid, go ahead and cut it, but the idea would be to have them show you what to cut, where to cut, and then cut it exactly the way they show you to. That way uh, you're preserving what they want, but you're doing some of the work for them. And that, that's acceptable. The other thing to do is to show them uh, the safe way to operate tools. So, you know, you, you may, you know, at your homework or something, not put on safety glasses or may not wear gloves or whatever. But in this instance, you would do everything that you possibly could to show them how to safely operate. So wear your safety goggles. Yeah, wear gloves where appropriate. Um, do what it needs, what you need to do to show them the right way to do it. That way, in the future, you know, they'll be safe when using a tool. Um, provide as much advice as you can when asked by a student. Um, help them to understand. Well, well I'll put that back. Um, Give advice when it's needed, okay? Um, if they are not sure how to proceed, the best way to give advice is to ask questions. So um, if they are not doing something that you think uh, should be done a different way, ask them, why are you doing it like that? And, and not in an accusatory way, but ask them, and I like to call it the old grandma method like oh I see you're doing this can you tell me um, why are you doing it like that or what what made you do it like that um, what was your plan when you were building this or how did you plan for that or you know ask them to explain as much as they can and use that then you can use that to kind of guide guide them don't guide them towards the direction that you want them to go but you can help guide them in the direction that they want to go. So a mentor allows the students to plan and carry out their own plan. You've got to let the students be the people in charge of their project. Answer questions with questions. So maybe you could, they might say, uh, how do we cut out a wheel? So you might say, well, what do you think you should do in order to cut out wheels? And so they, they might come back with, well, we've got to have the wood and the saw. Good, okay. How big would you make your wheels? Does that make a difference if you make them bigger or smaller? Or is there an, an optimal size for what you want to do? And this may lead to a discussion about ratios, uh, gear ratios, or you know, you've got the small motor spinning at a certain RPM, and if we make the wheel this big, how fast will it go? If we make it smaller, it'll go faster, but you won't go as far. If we make it bigger, we'll go further, but it'll go slower. A lot of different things that you could, you can bring into the discussion when answering questions with questions. Be sure that students are under adult supervision at all times. The key thing is safety, making sure that they're supervised, 
making sure that they're not doing things to cut off their fingers or their toes. Uh, as I tell my students, my uh, teachers, every time we would do something, your job is not to tell them what to do, just make sure they don't cut off fingers and toes. Don't be afraid to tell a kid to stop if they're doing something unsafe. Let that sink in just a little bit. You know, you may feel that, you know, it's the teacher's job to tell them, you know, what to do. And you're right to a degree. However, if somebody could get hurt, it's everybody's responsibility to make sure that that doesn't happen. Afterwards, though, after you stop them from doing something, show them how to do what they were trying to do the safe way. And it may be that the teacher has told them to do it this way, but, you know, for the most part, teachers don't have that experience or that expertise, which is why they asked you to come help in the first place. I know that some things that I did in the classroom, um, nobody had ever taught me how to do it the safe way or the right way. And so I would tell students to do something and they would do it. And then you know, at some point in time, somebody stopped and said, hey, why are they doing it like that? Well, that's the only way I know how to do it. And then they would stop and say, no, this is the way they do it, the right way. And I was okay with that because all I wanted to do is make sure nobody lost a finger or a toe. And so the best way to do that is do things safely. The last thing for your safety, uh, try not to be alone with students of the opposite sex, that or any student for that matter. Try to make sure that you keep yourself in with a group of students if possible. Okay. Uh, some expectations. Make sure the sponsors should have a meeting of some sort near the beginning of the season, just so all of you, all the adults, are on the same page. If they're not having that kind of meeting, maybe you suggest it to the to the sponsor that, hey, why don't we all thus adults get together and kind of discuss what it is that you want from us. Uh, and maybe it may start of a good thing. Um, try to get a schedule. Um, some sponsors have a specific time that the team is going to be working. Some, some sponsors just work when they can. Um, but try to get a schedule if you can. And let the sponsor know the times that you are available. You know, don't don't go to the point of hurting your work or your family uh, to be there helping these students. You know, if this is your time and you're giving it freely to this team. So, you know, take that into account. Let them know when you're available and let them know when you can come. And if you say you're going to come, however, be there when you say you're going to be there. Um, these students are going to be counting on you to be there to help them. These sponsors are going to be there counting on you to be able to help them in lending your expertise. So if you say, I'm going to be there, you need to be there. Uh, everybody knows emergencies happen. Things happen in this world. Sometimes you're kept late in a meeting. Sometimes there's a uh, traffic, et cetera. So just let somebody know, hey, I'm going to be late or I'm not going to be able to be there because X, Y, or Z. Just being responsible. Um, and let the kids know that you know I was late because part of my job or because of traffic. Uh, but if you say you're going to be there, and you are 90% of the time, then they'll understand that other 10% when things happen. A okay. couple things to the side. Um, a lot of adults think that students don't have the experience to build a robot. That this is something way beyond their ability. There's no way they can do that. But I'll attest to you that they are going to surprise you. Students can do all kinds of things. Children can think in ways that you, you wouldn't think they could. They are going to be able to build this robot. They're going to need some guidance along the way. They're going to be able to, they're going to need to be able to chase rabbits and go down paths where there it's not going to work if you do that, but they need to go down there. Give them a chance to make those mistakes because if they make it now, 
then next year they won't make that mistake again. The next competition that they get involved in, they'll learn from that. That's exactly what we want them to do. It you know winning is great, winning and going to the next level of competition is awesome, but the reason we're doing this is that students learn to think and that's been taken away from students they don't they're not given the opportunity to think about problems and thinking how to solve problems that's not available to them anymore in schools this is and this is a great place to do it it's a very safe environment for them to make mistakes learn from those mistakes and move on so if you allow that to happen, you are doing them a service. Okay, and in case nobody else tells you, thank you very much. Because without you, this wouldn't happen. You know, I know several teachers who know very little about construction or marketing or computer programming, but they want to have that out there for their students. And without you, it would be a lot slower, more arduous process to get these students to the point that they can actually do this by themselves. So your, your job is a hard one. You have the experience. You've been down these roads and you have taken the wrong paths and you've come back and you've learned from that and you want to help these students. You want to help them not take those roads. But remember, that's part of it. Learning here where nobody's life is at stake, really. Nobody's business is at stake. Um, letting them make those mistakes here is, is the best place to do it. So when you're helping them, help them as much as you can. But when you're down to, am I telling them too much or not telling them enough, you're on the side of not telling them enough. Unless it's something safety related, then tell them. Okay, kids are going to make mistakes. Let them do that, and it's all going to be good. I hope that you uh, have a good season with Best Robotics and learn to love it like I do. I love this thing. It, it to me, it's the best way to teach children uh, about math, science, engineering, technology all of that STEM plus everything else that goes into this program. So uh, good luck to you and I hope you have a good year. Uh, let's see, no, you don't need to know that. And it's a marketing team. Oh, sorry, that stuff doesn't go here. Sorry. Okay, well have a good year.